Whoa, dude, my name's Shutik, and today I have this, the Chase Bliss Generation Loss Mark II. I didn't even have to fuck or suck or jack anybody off in order to get it. That's because Chase Bliss is now selling direct to consumers. Get bent, reverb scalpers. The Chase Bliss Generation Loss Mark II is the latest iteration of the fabled Gen Loss by Cooper FX. It gives you an impressive amount of choices to degrade and warp your signal. Generation loss is a term coined by VCR scientists to describe the loss in quality over subsequent re-recordings of data. To me, it's like a nostalgia box. It sort of sounds like the time my dad went to go get cigarettes and he never came back. Today we're going to cover the controls, listen to some sound samples, cover my MIDI setup, and then finally I'll give you my thoughts on the gen loss and where I think you can make the best use of it. Let's cover the controls real quick. First we have WOW. This is a slow, smooth pitch modulation similar to vibrato. Wow can also be thought of as low frequency irregularities. Flutter impacts amplitude and pitch, giving you fast and twitchy modulation. This is similar to wow, but with more impact on high frequencies. Volume changes the output level of the wet signal. Unity is at noon. Saturate recreates magnetic saturation that occurs when loud signals are recorded to tape. Model lets you select one of the 12 tape modes. I expected a stepped switch here, but it's not. I wonder if this is because Chase Bliss plans on releasing updates for the pedal with additional models. Failure introduces malfunctions that occur in tape machines. The impact of this ranges from crinkles and pops to snags and drops. The aux toggle lets you select a performance effect using the left foot switch. You can stop, filter, fail, and freeze. The dry toggle sets the loudness of your clean signal. From none, which is pure tape machine, to unity, which provides equal wet and dry signal. If you want more control over this, you're gonna need a Klein bottle or some kind of mixer. Noise introduces hiss and mechanical noise. There are additional sub-controls that you can access that allow you to customize the noise the pedal makes. These are accessed by holding down both foot switches. You also have access to the Chase Bliss dip switches on the back of the pedal, which has MISO, or mono in, stereo out, and classic mode. One other item of note is the USB port. It's pretty deep within the enclosure. If this pedal ever has any updates, or you want to use one of the unofficial MIDI editors out there, you're going to need a cable with a particularly long connector. Now let's see how it sounds. My guitar today is a Fernandez Strat copy with Stonewall pickups in all three positions. Today's gonna to be a little different than usual. I'll be recording using a UA Ruby 63. I found that the Gen Loss sounds better with an amp sim than it did with my tube amp. I'll be recording in stereo, so the MISO switch is in the on position. It's worth noting that you need a special TRS to 2TS cable in order to use the stereo function. Here's what it sounds like clean. First up is a nice mellow nostalgic sound. Now let's try something in classic mode. I have the gen knob set real low to give us some nice grungy octave action.
Lastly, we'll check out Model 1, which is an old VCR in rough shape. I've added some additional VHS noise using the mechanical noise knob. Now let's talk MIDI. All the parameters can be accessed using a MIDI controller, including the dip switches. When I set this up with my Morningstar MC8, I had to change the Omniport setting found in the Controller Settings tab to MIDI Out Ring Active. I'm a MIDI novice, and this caused me a ton of frustration. I hope this saves someone else a headache. You can save two presets without a MIDI controller. If you want any more than that, you need to use a controller to access them. I feel like establishing presets is critical if you want to be able to spend more time playing than messing with settings. So overall, I enjoyed this pedal. I did find songwriting to be a little bit difficult with it, and I can't help but feel like this is something that's better added after you've written a song. In general, I feel like this is a pedal that you wouldn't see on someone's live rig, and it's something that you would see in a home studio setup. This pedal could be great for scoring a short film, it could be great for setting up an intro or an outro to a song, it's just something that's difficult to apply to the entirety of your song. For me, the amount of time it takes to dial this pedal into something I like really cuts into my songwriting time. And I'll be honest, as I get older, I have less and less songwriting time, so that kind of pushes me away from wanting to use this. I keep thinking back to the failure knob on this because it's one of the main reasons I bought this pedal, but it's so damn hard to get a good take while it's cutting in and out. It's just really, really distracting for me. After thinking about this a bit, I think this is how I'm going to approach the gen loss. I'm going to record my takes without it on. Then later, I'm going to reamp it back through the gen loss, play around with the settings, get it exactly where I want it, and then re-record that take. Overall, I recommend the gen loss, but it really depends on what you're looking for. There's a lot of great sounds to be had inside of it, but those sounds do come at the expense of some of your songwriting time. So make sure you balance your expectations, and you should be all set. Shootique!